Hi, I'm Rick, and today we're going to talk about the RTAC HMI video, and we're going to go more in-depth into all of the objects and controls that you can use in making a HMI for the RTAC. So I have a project open here that looks similar to the one we did last time, and I want to talk about some of these objects here. So I've already imported my tags, as I talked about before, and here they are in this tags list. And let's go to the controls and put some controls on this diagram. So the first control I want to talk about is the conductor. The conductors, by default, as you can see, are animated. And you can change the size, you can rotate the conductor to whatever angle that you need. And you can also turn the animation off by going over the properties and changing the animated flow to false. And I like to change the 3D styling to false as well. And then while you're in here, you can click on the tag name and assign a tag to it. And all of the tags that are analog type tags will show up here. So I'm going to select a voltage, and you can change the color of the conductor, and also what it looks like in different alarm states. So in other words, when the alarm goes above a certain value, then it will change color. So I'm going to make mine red for the critical high alarm, and make it green for the rest of the, of the alarm states. And then change my alarm level to, we'll just say 120 volts for the critical high. So what's going to happen here, I'll click done and click on this simulation button up here at the top and on the simulation button you can actually look at what happens when you're having a real critical high state or an alarm state for status or, or whatever you want. So I click on that and you can see that the line turns red and clear it by clicking on this button and that's the normal state which is green. So on a conductor of course green is not normal but that's uh, the way we set this up. So you could do the opposite or you could have it animated. Next thing I want to talk about is group boxes. So down here, you can see a bunch of analog values and you don't have to type all of them in individually. So I'll start with a clean slate and I've dragged over some um, analog tags and put a group box around. The group boxes are found under controls and I put the group box around these tags. Now all of these are for feeder one. So what I can do is highlight all of this Control-C to copy, Control-V, like Victor, to paste. And now I have two that are identical. While it's still highlighted, I can do Control-F for find and type in feeder1 and then replace text with feeder2. Click on replace text and you can selectively replace different things. I'm replacing everything in the selection. And you can see here that the group box name has changed to feeder2 and all of the tag names have also changed to feeder two. And I could do that for feeder three, feeder four, or whatever. And that's what we did here on the simulator substation overview. Next I want to talk about enunciator panels. Enunciator panels are very diverse. You can use them for a lot of things. So here we see the normal enunciator panel group that you'd have in a substation. And you can just add enunciator panels to your page. Click on layout, arrange, you can arrange by rows or columns, so you don't have to drag them into place. And they can flash based on a status point. So here I can change the tag name of that status point and also change the color and what they're going to do. We have acknowledgeable enunciator tiles, as we see here, that you can acknowledge them so when they start flashing because they're in alarm, you could acknowledge them. Another thing that enunciators do is allow you to link to another page. So here we have feeder four, and this is actually an enunciator tile. Look over here in properties. And it has a child page linked to it. So if I double click on that, it goes to another page. And you can go as deep as you want with those different pages. And the last thing I want to cover about enunciator tiles is you can make them invisible. So if I wanted to have a control object that is a particular type that is not in Diagram Builder right now, I can build that in Paint or whatever kind of drawing package that you want and then lay an enunciator tile over it. And here I have changed the enunciator alarm color and normal color to all zeros. And that indicates that it's going to be a transparent property. So if I drag this over here, you can see that it is actually transparent. And the object directly underneath is a breaker type. So I can put that over top of there and it's still gonna act like an enunciator. I can double click on it and it links me to a different page. 
and you can use it just like any other enunciator. But it kind of opens up a whole world of things that you can do with uh, objects that you need that we don't have directly in Diagram Builder. You can just build them however you want. And let's talk about overlays a little bit. This is a very detailed image that um, we imported a 751 image that we talked about in the last video. But there's a lot of other things here that you can't really draw in Diagram Builder as easily. So this is actually just an overlaid image. So it's a PNG file that I drew and I cut out different images like these lines and certain holes and it allowed things to show up in the back because they're holes. And you have to use a PNG file to do that. And you can also see that each one of these uh, LEDs are actual real LEDs that are um, linked to tags. These controls are linked to tags. And so you can draw a page uh, basically any way you want. You can actually put the LEDs on the image, on this relay image, if you wanted to do that. You can also embed trends. So we did that in this image here. And when you select the tags for the trends, then you can change the attributes of the tags to be red or whatever color you want for the line and also change the min and max size of the x and y coordinates. And the plot time goes up to 24 hours and the plotting occurs while you're watching it like in Chrome or whatever. So it doesn't actually store historical values in the RTAC. It actually is just plotting real-time values. And if you um, want to have some pre-made templates, you can go to the Diagram Builder page on SEL's website and just download them. So here's an example. This is the 751A. Doesn't look exactly like the relay, but it does have all the information that you need from the relay. And these are all objects that you can link to tags. So they're all unassigned right now because they're not you know, your project. The last couple things I wanted to say was that there's a lot of different objects here that you can play with. The disconnect switch, a lot of things like that that are animated. And you can build your diagram however you need to. And that's pretty much it. We have another video coming up for the HMI that's going to talk about indirect tagging, or it's also called shared tags. It allows you to consolidate your screens down to one or just a couple screens, depending on what you want to look at. So if you want to look at different buildings or different devices, you don't have to have screens for every one of those. You can just share one screen. And that's pretty much it for this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to call us here at SEO.